I'm happy to um, hand over to the second uh, speaker, which is Michael Zawatsky, also from Switzerland, from St. Gallen. And Michael, uh, very experienced, will um, talk about the role of contrasound ultrasound in diagnosis and patient management of liver metastasis. In this webinar of the EFSUM, European Federation of Societies for Ultrasound Medicine Biology, and sponsored by Braco, um, uh, manufacturer of uh, Sonovio. So um, I would love if Michael, Michael, are you uh, on screen? Go for uh, screen sharing, and then um, we are looking forward to listen to your presentation on the role of CEOs in diagnosis and patient management of liver metastasis. Michael. Hey, Christoph, thank you very much for your introduction. Do you see my, can you see my screen? Do you hear me clearly? We yes. can see you and hear you clearly. Okay, good evening, everybody. My name is Mikhail Savatsky. I'm a hepatologist at the Canton Spital in St. Gallen in the east of uh, Switzerland. It, it's an honor for me. Thank you for the invitation to speak about the role of CEUS in the diagnosis of liver metastasis. So now I try to start my presentation. Okay, that's my overview. I will talk about grayscale ultrasound and CUS of liver metastasis, then the accuracy and advantages of CUS. And then I will show you enhancing patterns of liver metastasis on the basis of case presentation. And at the end, I want to present the benefits of CUS in a colorectal cancer in a prospective signal center study. So, I'll present you now six grayscale ultrasound images with the question if you can diagnose a liver metastasis. So one of your answer could be this question makes no sense. And that would be a very good answer because you have no information about the patient and it's not very possible to make a very good diagnosis in each case. So is it very important, the risk factors, risk factors, Christoph uh, mentioned it in, for HCC, but also in non serotic patients, the risk factors are very important for potential malignancy. The age is one risk factor, weight loss, fever, night sweets, the known or past malignancy, a family history of malignancy. And of course we have heard it already, liver cirrhosis but also patients with chronic liver disease without cirrhosis at a higher risk, particularly in patients with chronic hepatitis B infection, metabolic associated focal liver disease and hemochromatosis. And also new documented focal liver lesions and fast growing documented focal liver lesions. So now with much more information, you could answer easily the first images of absolutely asymptomatic patients without risk factors. On grayscale ultrasound, you will diagnose a simple cyst. Here, a uh, focal fat infiltration in the, beneath of the gallbladder, and here, uh, focal fat sparing in the liver. In this case of a patient who is asymptomatic with no risk factors, you would diagnose a hematoma. But if this patient would be older and would have a malignancy in the past history, it also could be a hypoecogenic liver metastasis. This patient has night sweet and loss of weight, and this patient is a patient with abdominal pain. Here is it a little bit more difficult or impossible to make a clear and secure diagnosis on gray scar ultrasound. You will see the results later. In these three cases, the first three cases, these are three liver metastases, but in asymptomatic patients. This patient had no risk factors. On these two images, these are two patients with abdominal pain. These are also two liver metastases on grayscale ultrasound. And this patient is absolutely asymptomatic. It's a patient with cystic fibrosis with inhomogeneous focal fatty infiltration. So it's impossible really to exclude a liver metastasis only on grayscale ultrasound. So that's the, the answer of my question. Can patient history and clinic guide grayscale ultrasound for the accurate diagnosis of liver metastasis? I think the answer is no. 
This is the 60-year-old female patient. She's asymptomatic with no risk factors. And you see this hyperechogenic liver lesion. Also, you see other liver lesions. Of course, it could be uh, hemangiomatosis, no risk factors, but 60 years old patients. You see the seconds after the injection of 1.5 milliliter Zonavu. And you see this unspecific contrast enhancement in the arterial phase in all liver lesions. And then after one minute 15 in the port of venous phase, you can recognize all lesions with washout. In the liver metastasis, if you're waiting until, until the late venous phase, we'll have a marked washout. So this is a typical example of a liver metastasis. This was a patient with a neuroendocrine carcinoma. The other case that is a 59-year-old patient with a cutaneous malignant melanoma with suspicion of a liver metastasis in the left liver lobe, subcapsular, hypercogenic, inhomogeneous. Here the arterial phase, the heart beating, and you see after zone of injection, the rim enhancement. First you have a rim enhancement, and then on further images you will have a slowly centripetal filling and the whole lesion is uh, you have the contrast agent wash in and you have no wash out until five minutes. So now you can exclude in five minutes a liver metastasis. This is a hemangioma. Let me propose you a diagnostic algorithm for focal liver lesion. We have a hepatic lesion. We suspected the focal fat sparring or fatty changes or simple cyst or hemangioma. And if this patient would have no risk factors and is asymptomatic, I think you can make a diagnosis on grayscale ultrasound alone. But if you have symptomatic patients or risk factors, you need a contrast imaging modality, for example, contrast enhanced ultrasound. CUS is excellent for the differentiation of benign and malignant focal liver lesions. Briefly summarized, accuracy of CUS is better than CT and similar uh, than MRI. These are the most important prospective multicenter studies, also the guidelines in 2013. And also in this meta analysis, CUS has a sensitivity and specificity between 90 and 93%. And also in the east of Switzerland, in our clinical routine, we had similar results. What are the international guidelines holding about this? We have a weak recommendation. CUS can be used for liver metastasis detection as part of the multimodality imaging approach. And we have a strong recommendation. CUS is recommended in patients with inconclusive findings at CT and MRI imaging. So CUS is a good thing. If we decide performing CUS, what are other advantages in comparison to CT and MRI? We have no significant severe anaphylactoid reactions. We have no problems with paralyzation. We have no effect of the thyroid and kidney. We have no radiation. And the costs, particularly in Switzerland, are three times lower than performing MRI. I always mention the accuracy. If we perform ultrasound and CUS, we have no diagnostic delay. And the examination time is seven times faster than MRI. And the contrast agent volume is 100 times lower than CT contrast agent. But of course, image quality and inter-observation can be a problem using CUS. I want to propose you a chematic CUS enhancement patterns for the liver metastasis. Here is the arterial phase, the portal venous phase, and the late venous phase. And you can have this hyper-enhancement of the whole liver lesion, the metas, or a rim enhancement, Christoph showed it already. Or you can have an easel or hypo-enhancement. And in all three cases, you will have a washout and a marked washout in the late venous phase. Problematic are liver metastases who have no enhancement, who are completely necrotic or avascular. If you have no wash-in, you will have no washout. This is now the second example of a hyper-enhanced liver metastasis. In a 70-year-old female patient with abdominal wall abscess, you see this cystic lesion with echogenic material inside. You're not sure, is it a cyst, is it an abscess? So performing contrast enhanced ultrasound, we will have the answer in about a few seconds. You see the seconds after IV injection of some of you, and now you can answer, it's not a cyst, it's not an abscess, it's a hyper-enhancement of this lesion. 
And then after three minutes, you see this wash out. So it's a malignant liver lesion and the biopsy proved a primary B cell lymphoma of the liver. This is the example of this rim enhancement in a liver metastasis in a patient with cancer of the rectum, 67 year old patient. You will see this hypoechogenic liver lesion with the satellite lesion. Again, six centimeter, and then you see on the film this hyper enhancement at the edge of this lesion. The rest is necrotic. And now you have to pay attention not to miss the washout in the edge. So you can, for example, make a measurement in the arterial phase, and then the diameter will increase in the, in the late venous phase. Pay attention at the edge on this side, and now you see you have a washout. This is the example of a 74-year-old male patient with prostate cancer. The example of a hyper or enhanced liver metastasis. You see this hypoechogenic liver lesion of 12 millimeter. He also has hyperechogenic lesion. We have seen free lesion in the liver. And then in the arterial phase, you have no hyperenhancement of this lesion. But firstly, you will recognize multiple washout lesion. The whole liver has liver metastasis here, 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 and here. So wash in, wash out. It's very simple. This is an example of a 60-year-old female patient with a malignant melanoma with abdominal pain with this 12 centimeter inhomogenic liver lesion in the right liver lobe. And now you see this neoplastic vessels, chaotic vessels in your face and the dark area is the necrotic avascular uh, tissue, and you see here at the edge now after 30 seconds the washout. This is the last case now of a 70 year old male I've seen last week with esophageal cancer, T stage T3, nodular positive, six months of, after chemotherapy, they detected on CT this new diagnosed hypotense lesion beneath the ligament. This is the grayscale ultrasound with this hypoechogenic lesion beneath the ligament and in cross-sectional image, you see this hypochogenic lesion of 2.3 centimeters with this hypoechogenic uh, halo. So if I may propose again this diagnostic algorithm, we have this hepatic lesion. We suspect it because of the typical location, um, a focal fat, a fatty change, but we have a patient with symptoms at, at risk. So we would use contrast enhanced ultrasound. If we would have ease enhancement, so the same arterial contrast dynamic, like in the surrounding liver tissue without washout, so we can diagnose the fatty change. But if we would have a washout after its enhancement or hyperenhancement with washout, this could be a liver metastasis. In the case of hyperenhancement without washout, perhaps it could be hemangioma if we have a iris diaphragma sign or FNH if we have the spoke wheel pattern. This is the example of this patient. You see the uh, early portal venous phase. We have no hyperenhancement. The same contrast uh, with, with uh, like in the surrounding liver parenchyma. And after five minutes, always the same, no washout. So we exclude after five minutes the liver metastasis. This is the fatty infiltration. So in clinical routine, we have two possibilities. We have seen incidentaloma on grayscale ultrasound, and we can perform immediately CUS with a very exact differentiation of malignant and benign. And on the other case, we can have oncologic patient and we're searching liver metastasis, but most of the oncologic patients will not be sent to our unit. Uh, they will have the, uh, directly a CT staging. It's clear. The advantage of CT is the staging of the chest and the abdomen. And with CUS, you would only stage the liver. So which oncologic patient benefits from CUS? Is it only just only nice to have to perform now, of course not. The problem is liver metastasis are found in 25% of patients with colorectal cancer, but up to 30% of liver metastasis are missed by CT. This is a study of South Korea. These are 211 patients undergoing liver resection because of liver metastasis and the preoperative CT had an overall accuracy of 81% of in the patients. And the accuracy is 
only 55% for metastasis between 6 and 10 millimeter, and only 8% in very small metastasis. So we can ask, why do we need another CUS study analyzing colorectal liver metastasis? We have already a lot of these studies, but half of them are retrospective. Most of the studies were performed by radiologists, and the number of patients are not very uh, high. It's the highest study is the study with 110 patients, and there's a different uh, uh, one study included uh, characterization, and other studies did detection. That makes a difference. And you can't uh, compare the contrast agent and the dosing. So that's the 1.2 to 2.4 or zonazolate. And also the standard of reference is heterogenic with intraoperative ultrasound with palpation or histology or PET-CT or MRI and so on and so on. And some studies included also patient after chemotherapy or ablation or included only T2 and T4 tumor stage patient and so on. So I present our prospective signal center study performed only by one hepatologist to avoid inter-observer variation and we, this, the, the number of patients were 296. That's the large number of patients in colorectal cancer. And we use Zonaview 0.8 to 1.5 milliliter. And the aim of the study was how many liver metastases were detected by CEUS? And how is the impact on, on oncological therapy? And how many liver lesions are of unclear dignity on staging CT? And how many are correctly diagnosed by CEUS. So we included 296 patients with newly diagnosed colorectal cancer by colonoscopy and histology. They have all a stage CT and were presented at our tumor board. We performed ultrasound between 2015 to May 2019, performed by one hepatologist and we compared CEUS with CT. And after then we performed the radiological and oncological review. Uh, these are the recruitment of 303 patients. patients. We excluded seven patients, five because of limited ultrasound conditions, and two patients because of a diagnostic delay over five weeks between CT and CUS, to exclude the argument of a de novo liver metastasis. So we included 296 patients and had 229 congruent results. So no focal liver lesion or benign liver, uh, liver lesions on CT and CUS. So we had 67 divergent results between CT and CUS. In 62 cases, the liver lesions were of unclear dignity after staging CT. We diagnosed five colorectal liver metastases in this group. One case remains unclear and 56 patients had no colorectal liver metastases in this group. Here are the focal liver lesions without evident liver metastasis after staging CT, five patients. We diagnose three liver metastasis and two cases remains unclear. Standard of reference for correct liver metast metastasis uh, were biopsy and MRI. And for benign liver lesions, biopsy, MRI, and follow up with a mean follow up of 18 months. These are the patient and uh, procedural characteristics Male patients were 61%, the mean age was 67 years, with a mean body mass index of 26. 75% of cancer were located in the colon. And the advanced tumor stage T3, T4 were found in about over 66% of patients. Half of the patients had no lymph node involvement. The size of focal liver lesions. 80% of the liver lesions were smaller than 20 millimeter, or 37% are smaller than 11 millimeter. We needed only one zone of injection in 85% of the cases. The ultrasound image quality, good to moderate, was found in 89%. And of course, not surprisingly, we have a high significant association between the mean BMI with the ultrasound image quality. So here are the results, the diagnostic accuracy of CUS when performed in patients without liver metastasis on staging CT. We had 
eight true positive patients. So we found eight liver metastases. We have one false negative result by CUS in three cases, CUS remains unclear. So we detected 2.7% liver metastasis by CUS with a sensitivity of 89, specificity, specificity of 99, and 100% predictive value. This is the colorectal tumor stage after staging CT with eight additional liver metastases, and the liver metastases were found only in T3, T4 tumor stage. From these eight patients, 50% had no lymph node involvement, and 62% of these patients had no elevated tumor marker CEA. So the results, we found eight additional colorectal liver metastases in 2.7% of the patients regarding only tumor stage T3, T4. We found 4% more liver metastases. And the number needed to screen in this T3, T4 patient would be 24 to 25 patients. Of these patients with colorectal liver metastases, Oncologic therapy changed in 75% of these patients with systemic chemotherapy before the operation. And the focal liver lesion of unclear dignity after staging CT was 21%. And the CEUS accuracy in this patient were 98%, with saving, of course, MRI imaging and costs. The conclusion of the study where patients with colorectal cancer with tumor stage T3, T4 benefit from CUS. CUS can guide oncologic therapy. And in case of unclear dignity or focal liver lesion after staging CT, we would propose CUS as next imaging. This is the summary of our published study. You'll see here a uh, uh, misdiagnosed hemangioma by CT. It was a wash out uh, liver lesion, it was a liver metastasis. This is the case of a hypotense liver lesion of uncertain dignity on CT, which was diagnosed as hemangioma by CEUS. So the next take home message of my talk, grayscale ultrasound is diagnostic, particularly in patients with no risk factors, with the simple cyst, for example, focused fat infiltration, Grayscale ultrasound with risk factors or unclear dignity needs CUS. If this is a young patient without risk factors, it's a hemangioma. If it's an older patient with risk factors, it could be hypoecogenic metastasis. And this is the case of the patient with night sweat and uh, loss of weight. This was a hemangioma with this centripetal filling. This patient with abdominal pain was a patient with focal natural hyperplasia. You see in the appeal face this spoke wheel sign with this typical scar in the late venous phase. And CUS is excellent for the diagnosis of liver metastasis with this typical wash in and simply said wash out. And it's also helpful in necrotic areas for guiding biopsy or ablative therapy. Thank you for your attention. Yeah, dear Michael, thank you so much for uh, that very conclusive uh, presentation on diagnosis of liver metastasis and the role of contrasnance ultrasound. And um, there have been one question, why is computed tomography preferred for follow-up with MI? as MRI appears to be the more sensitive method. This was a study in a clinical routine that the patients were managed by the oncologist and the oncologist had their protocol and they proceeded, they, they performed every six months the CT. So, so we had no influence and we have no, pro, uh, no, um, no uh, specific study protocol to make the uh, follow-up. So we let the guidance management, the oncologic specialties. But of course, MRI would be much, much, uh, much better. But if you have on CUS a clear benign liver lesion, you don't really need uh, to perform an MRI. Yo, right now I can't hear you anymore, but perhaps you. I'm, have... I'm... 
I'm here. I'm here, Christoph. Yeah, very good. I can hear you. Uh, the second question, uh, which has been uh, shown, is uh, I I do not understand that question with in contrast to if that. Uh, um lady or gentleman could repeat the question i would be more happy uh, to um to discuss it so i skip and go to the next one how can i differentiate between necrotic metastasis with rim enhancement and abscess that's a very excellent question <laughs> that's not always possible and then you need a liver biopsy you can't not differentiate it clearly that's that's a very good question. That that's a problem of CRS. You can have a hyperenhancement in a liver metastasis, but also an abscess. You can have a liver metastasis, which is necrotic with an infection inside. So at the end, you need a liver biopsy. We had just uh, this case uh, two weeks ago: a 33-year-old patient with ovarian cancer coming from Guatemala to Zurich with 40 degree uh, of uh, temperature, uh, C-reactive protein 230, and we've seen this uh, necrotic um, lesion on CUS, and we're not sure is it a liver metastasis or an abscess, and the puncture has, uh, performing the puncture, we have no liquid inside, it was a solid, it was a liver metastasis. Yeah, thank you so much also for uh, this risk so no more questions uh, within the audience um, and uh, therefore we could go on.